Hello and welcome to another SMS project. I'm Stu Stones and I'm back after a short break. Today I show you how to download and install a CentOS 6 server onto Unraid Server 6.2 and configure a basic Samba file server. First of all, sorry for the lack of videos recently. The addition of this little one to my family recently, along with an increase of work at the data center where I work has sucked up all my time. I do have lots of new content planned, some scripted and some even filmed. In this first of a two-parter, I'm building my new CentOS 6 server to replace my backup server, which at the moment is a physical Linux box with some local storage, which connects to my SCSI LTO tape drive. Eventually, physical hardware again on a VM, which is cool. It will allow me to cold archive my files to LTO tape for off-site storage. As part of the build, I'll show you a couple of OS tweaks and install Samba with a simple configuration so I can copy files for later tape archiving. Let's get started. First of all, let's download CentOS. I'm sticking with CentOS 6 instead of the newer CentOS 7, simply because I'm replacing like for like my current backup server. Fire up a web browser and go to https colon slash slash www.centos.org slash download. Once there, for CentOS 6, click more download choices, 6, x86-64. Select a mirror under actual country. I'm going with mirrorservice.org and I'm going for the 6.8 net install ISO. If you saw my previous video on Windows 10, I showed you how to download straight to the ISO share on your Unraid server. I'm doing the same thing here, downloading straight to my server. Since this is a video about Linux, I thought I'd show you a quick way of downloading files direct from within Linux, bypassing the web browser. This only works however if you know the exact path of the ISO. SSH to your Unraid server, I'm using PuTTY which is freely available. If you've never used SSH before, stick to the web browser method, but since this video is about installing CentOS server, chances are you're familiar with SSH. Once in, cd to slash mnt slash user slash isos, and that path is case sensitive, and use the wget command to download the iso direct from the mirror. I'm using the same link as the web browser method, but avoiding all that mouse time. Once you've downloaded your ISO, head to your Unraid GUI and create a VM from VMs, then use the CentOS template. I'm giving my VM two CPUs, 2048 megs of memory, or 2 gig, I'm selecting the CentOS ISO for the installation, and I'm giving the VM a 20 gig disk. I'm leaving the graphics card set as VNC, as I don't need to dedicate a physical monitor to this VM, and I'm setting the VNC keyboard to UK, as that's where I live. Finally, ensure your VM is connected to a network, and you have DHCP running somewhere. Once done, click Create and the VM should start and boot. Open your VNC console and make sure the VM is booting from the ISO. Go for an installation and when prompted, skip the media test, select your language and your location. As I've downloaded the net install image, it will need to connect to the internet to download the remainder of the OS. Select URL. I'm going to disable IPv6 as I don't use it on my network yet. Enter this slightly modified URL for the mirror that you chose earlier. This portion of the mirror contains the remainder of the setup files rather than just the net install image. Now we're in the GUI part of the installation, click next, go with basic storage, give your server a name, set your time zone, give your server a secure root password, replace the file systems, and finally write the changes to disk. I'm going with a basic server as everything else I want can be installed afterwards. At this point, sit back and wait for the packages to download. Now the installation is complete, from the Unraid console, unmount the installation ISO, then hit the reboot button on the console. If all's gone well, the VM should boot up with a vanilla install of CentOS 6. After logging in, the first command I'm going to run is yum update, which applies any updates to packages released after the installation package. To me it seems silly running the net install of CentOS, which downloads packages direct from the internet, just to then have to update them. But anyone who's ever run Windows Update will know how this feels. Running this update will also ensure your kernel is patched against Dirty Cow and other such vulnerabilities. Once the packages are installed and updated, send a reboot command to the VM. Once the VM has rebooted again and you've logged in, there are a few OS tweaks I like to make before moving on. The first is to disable Quiet Boot, so instead of seeing the blue progress bar I can see what is actually going on. 
To do this, edit the slash etc slash grub dot conf file and remove rhgb and quiet from the first kernel line. I'm using Vi, but you could use Nano or some other editor. The next thing I like to do, especially on VMs, is to disable power management and disable the console screensaver. To do this, enter this command, which adds a line to one of the startup scripts which disables those power management features automatically. The next thing I like to do is set a static IP, and should always be usually done on servers so they're always accessible from the same address. To do this, edit the slash etc sysconfig network hyphen scripts slash if cfg ether zero file and change the boot protocol line to say static and add the following three lines at the bottom IP adder for your IP address, netmask for your subnet mask, gateway for your router or gateway's address. If you're not 100% comfortable with changing these, you can leave your server set to obtain an IP automatically from your router, but I like to set static addresses for servers. Save and quit the editor when you're done. The final two things I'm going to do is to disable SE Linux, which will help with the Samba file server later, and disable the built-in firewall as I'm only using this VM on my local network. To disable SE Linux, edit the slash etc slash sysconfig SE Linux file and set SE Linux equals disabled. Save and quit your editor when done. Finally, to stop IP tables, which is the firewall, starting automatically on boot, type check config IP tables off. One final reboot later, my CentOS VM is ready for configuring the Samba file server. Now the VM has rebooted and I'm back in again, I'm going to install and configure Samba, which allows Windows clients on my network to store files on Linux. I'm going to run yum install Samba and after a few moments it's going to be ready for me to configure. Edit the slash etc slash samba slash smb.conf file and you'll see it's full of notes and examples of, of various scenarios. I've pre-prepared a working config which I'll include in the video description, so I'll copy that in now. Now my config is in, I'm going to give the root user access to Samba by running smb passwd a root and enter the password. Next I'm going to create the directory to be shared by Samba, in this case slash home slash backup. Finally, I'm going to set Samba to start automatically by running check config smb on and slash etc init d slash smb restart. So to test my new Samba file server, from my Windows desktop, I'm going to right click start, click run and type backslash backslash my Samba server's IP address and press enter. I'm greeted with a login box, so I'll enter root and the password and I should now see a share called backup which I created as part of my Samba configuration. I can now copy and paste files into this share. This was just a quick overview on installing CentOS 6 onto Unraid, doing some OS tweaks and installing the Samba file server with just one basic share. There are other ways of doing it, some simpler, some more secure, but for my home network this basic configuration will work just fine. Next time I'm going to show you how to pass through a physical SCSI card with a tape drive attached and via the virtual machine backup and restore files to tape. Such a scenario won't be useful to everyone I appreciate, but it will help me remove a physical server from my rig and help me towards the goal of virtualizing my three boxes. See you next time.